she's laying down uh, unconscious, possibly even uh, even dead, but definitely unconscious. It's improbable that Joran van der Sloot will ever be incarcerated for the murder of Natalie Holloway, a crime he callously profited from by deceitfully conning her mother. Nevertheless, Beth Holloway, Natalie's mother, has found peace, knowing her never-ending nightmare has finally concluded. Her daughter's killer has been officially identified through an imperfect plea agreement, which is likely the Holloway family's best shot at justice. Van der Sloot admitted to extortion and wire fraud, and as part of the agreement, was required to divulge all he knows about Natalie Holloway's murder in Aruba, a crime he confessed to committing. Van der Sloot is already serving a sentence in Peru for another murder, and his 20-year sentence will run concurrently. Since the statute of limitations for murder in Aruba is 12 years and has long passed, he is free to disclose almost any information about the murder. Thus, although the agreement doesn't provide satisfaction to the Holloway family by seeing Van der Sloot imprisoned for Natalie's murder, it does offer something nearly as valuable. Answers. Beth Holloway expressed, I don't believe any victim's family will ever find any amount of time sufficient. So here's what brings me comfort. I needed to know what happened to Natalie. The existence of a statute of limitations for murder might surprise many Americans, but it was a key consideration for then U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance when she pursued the extortion case against Van der Sloot in 2010. Vance, now a legal analyst, stated, Laws in other countries can differ significantly from ours, particularly regarding statutes of limitation and sentence lengths. We were always mindful of that in this case. When Natalie Holloway disappeared in May 2005 during a vacation in Aruba, Beth Holloway traveled to the Caribbean island and encountered Van der Sloot the next day, unaware that he would confess to the murder 18 years later. She recalled, I was face to face with my daughter's killer that night at the Holiday Inn, but I didn't know it. I thought I was face to face with a suspect involved in her disappearance. Five years after Natalie Holloway's disappearance, Van der Sloot cruelly targeted Beth Holloway with a scam, demanding $250,000 in exchange for information about her daughter's remains. Beth's attorney, John Q. Kelly, even traveled to Aruba in May 2010 to negotiate the deal. Fraud. She asked to go back to her hotel, but I was just trying to get dropped off a little bit uh, further away from her hotel. So we could uh, walk back to her hotel and I might still get a chance to, to be with her. Van der Sloot received a $25,100 down payment from Beth Holloway in exchange for completely false information about her daughter's whereabouts. Although Van der Sloot initially escaped consequences for the hoax, he was indicted in 2010 on charges of extortion and wire fraud in the U.S. This led to his extradition from Peru after he was imprisoned for the murder of Peruvian college student Stephanie Flores, 21, and eventually he confessed to Natalie Holloway's murder. Beth Holloway acknowledged a Washington, D.C. public relations firm, Patriot Strategies, for helping facilitate communication between the U.S. and Peru, resulting in Van der Sloot's extradition. An extradition treaty had been signed between Washington and Lima in 2001. Holloway mentioned that she and TV news personality Greta Van Susteren worked together on this effort, but they faced challenges in getting the case over the finish line. She also expressed gratitude for federal prosecutors and investigators in Birmingham, who allowed her to witness Van der Sloot's confession in real time from an adjacent room, instead of receiving transcripts after the fact. She heard Van der Sloot's incriminating statements as they were happening. Van der Sloot provided disturbing details about the murder, including kicking Natalie Holloway in the head after she rejected his advances and then assaulting her with a cinder block when she was unconscious. After disposing of Holloway's lifeless body in the Caribbean Sea, he returned home, where he checked soccer scores and viewed pornography. Beth Holloway remarked, That is a person with no conscience, no remorse, no guilt. She's relieved now that Van der Sloot has confessed and looks forward to spending time with her adult son and grandchildren.